Thanks a lot for introducing us. Um, yeah, welcome to our talk. Um, we're very honored to have one of the first slots of this um, conference. So we somehow introduced this year's PyCons, which made us very, very glad. Um, yeah, we're happy to share um, Apache Streampipes with you, and especially Apache Streampipes for Python, which is a new major, which is a new, um, which is a new major feature of Apache Streampipes. Can you hear me now clearly? Okay, great. Um, yeah, and we want to show you how uh, Apache Streampipes kickstarts your handling of uh, IoT data and enables you to directly start with the fun part. Um, yeah. So we have prepared a short slide about us. Um, a lot of information have already been mentioned, but since some people are joining still, um, I will just have to the short introduction. Um, yeah, my, I, my name is Tim. I'm working as a data engineer at um, Innovex, and more than that, I'm also actively contributing to Apache Streampipes. I'm also part of the PMC, which stands for Program Management Committee which can somehow be compared to the core maintainer team um, around Apache Streampipes. I came across with Streampipes during my time at university and are now, I think, for two or up to three years contributing to, to Streampipes. And I'm very happy to share this talk today with Sven. Hello, my name is Sven. I'm a student for artificial intelligence at the University in Offenburg. And I'm also a working student at Bytefabrik AI. I'm a committer for the Apache Streampipes project, and I worked on the Python library that we will show you later. All right, but very important to mention here is that Streampipes is not about only us two. So we are only holding this talk in behalf of the Streampipes uh, community, com uh, committer community. And in total, we are around, let's um, probably 25 committers across several countries and even continents. Okay, so much about us. Let's start with the actual talk. Um, if you remember last autumn and winter and maybe even summer, um, energy has been a huge topic during the world and especially Europe and Germany. I've brought here some newspaper articles that just very drastically show what, what um, the fears were during the time. Luckily, things didn't turn out that bad, like these media um, articles have implied, but we are still facing an energy crisis, and we realize that especially Germany has a need to modernize in how we produce and consume energy, especially in the heating technology. Um, so one, one uh, approach or one technology that is recently very widely and also actively discussed is this one I brought here. It's a heat pump. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's probably one way um, people can uh, modernize their energy production in, in, yeah, in the upcoming years. And I think what's also changed besides uh, more focusing on new technologies is also the willingness to measure one's energy consumption and also having more insights in how we consume energy and how we efficient we, uh, are in this. And um, these were also some thoughts that Sven and his family had, and they also invested in such a heat pump. And now they were interested in how this heat pump actually performs and when it's most efficient. So luckily, the most modern industry devices um, have somehow an interface to extract data. And this is also the case for this heat pump. So they offer Modbus um, as a protocol to, to get data from it. So that's pretty cool, uh, they thought. So let's build an appealing dashboard. Um, and the next step is you have a look at Modbus. So Modbus was invented in 1979. It's a very old um, industry protocol for communication between programmable logic, logic controllers. So that are electronic units that are uh, inside every larger industry, industrial product. Um, Modbus supports only four types of data or objects. Um, two of them are represented only by one bit, so you can only store Boolean values in it, and the other two allow you to store 16 bit, which are then smaller integers. Um, and you have also to take care about the addresses in all the registers, so you have to exactly know where you stored your data and where you can get them from. So to be honest, this does not really sound really fun or convenient to work with, and that's exactly the place where Apache Streampipes come in. So Apache Streampipes is an open source industrial IoT toolbox 
that one enables non-technical users to connect, analyze, and exploit IoT data streams. And we're not only focusing non-technical users, but also persons who, or people who doesn't like to get involved in all this IoT protocol stuff and all the pitfalls they, they have. Uh, Streampipes is a project of the Apache Foundation, and we have been graduated to a top-level project some months ago. Um, yeah, and we have recently launched version 0.91.0, which, as I already mentioned, mainly includes our Python support. Um, Streampipes, at the core, follows an event-driven approach, so every data point in Science 3 Pimes is represented as an event, and therefore um, yeah, shared and um, processed during, um, during stream pipes. As a next step, I just want to share some of our core features with you and give you a quick uh, walkthrough to, through them. The first one is Stream Pipes Connect. That's exactly the place when you just want to um, adapt a data source for the first time. Connect is somehow a marketplace for all the adapters we have in place in Streampipes. It allows you to quickly connect industrial data sources in real time. We have around 20 uh, adapters currently um, that we support. And we also allow you to um, apply some pre-pressing rules for data harmonization directly at this point. Uh, so for example, if you want to transform a data point in its unit of measurement, and we also demonstrate you how this works in our uh, demo later on. The next step is you have now your data within the stream pipes and you probably want to somehow manipulate them or process them and share them at other places. So therefore we have the pipeline editor where you can um, define your data pipelines within an interactive UI. Um, and we have plenty of predefined data processing um, data processes, um, they are currently around 100, I guess, um, and they're ranging from simple threshold or alerting um, processes up to um, embedding AI models or more complex stuff. Um, we also offer an, an SDK so that you can write your own processing elements. Currently, this is only possible in Java, but we're planning to add this feature to our Python integration as well. And if you now have your, your data in the shape you want, um, we have two ways to actually rep, uh, sh present them in stream pipes. The first one is a live dashboard. Um, this just allows you to easily visualize some live metrics and KPIs with some predefined um, widgets that allow you to easily show your data in a gauge or as a simple uh, line chart. And the second data analysis tool we offer is the data explorer, uh, which is somehow a bit more um, advanced, so this allows you also to analyze your data um, in a historical representation, and this offers more extensive features to find correlations in your data um, to just create more appealing and also more advanced plots. All right, um, now I have show you, I've shown you the um, exact features very in a more detailed fashion, and now I want to have a look at how um, and stream pipes look in an end-to-end -end um, in an end-to-end -end manner. Um, at the left-hand side, we already start with some data sources, right? Um, and usually they're heterogeneous. So for in this case, we have some UPC, OPC UA data, an MQTT device, and for example, a Modbus device like the heat pump I've just mentioned. Um, we then use stream pipes connect to connect all of the data sources. We can then combine them in our um, in our pipelines and enrich them, transform them, and manipulate the data in any form. Within stream pipes, data is handled in, in two ways, so you can either persist them in our time series database, or uh, as long as you process them as live events, um, we do this via our message brokers, where we also support uh, multiple ones. Um, if the data is now in that shape at, um, at you, as you like it to have, uh, we have three different options of how you can interact with your data. The first one is the graphical user interface, um, which I have just uh, shared with you. So the pipeline um, editor, the live dashboard, and the data explorer. And then you can also programmatically interact with the data, and that's what we mainly show you today. Um, so we have for longer already in Java SDK, but now we also have a Python SDK, and this is what, our, uh, what the second half of the talk will mainly be about. And an important aspect always is also you can easily share your data with external third-party systems. So be it, for example, Kafka, 
RocketMQ, IoTDB, or other databases like PostgreSQL, um, whatever you can imagine. All right, this already brings us to our first demo. Um, so I would show you the example of the heat pump I've already mentioned. Um, of course, we cannot directly um, ingest the data from the actual heat pump, but we have brought you a little simulator that just simulates a Modbus device um, showing the, the um, yeah, and that contains real data of the heat pump of Sven's family. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let me just switch my screening. Okay, yeah, that's now uh, Apache Streampipes, and I will now show you how you, easy, how you can um, get the data from the Modbus device within two Streampipes. Um, as I already said, um, we have this connect module. Maybe I'll just make it a bit larger so that, that you can better read it. Um, and we want now to create a new adapter. Uh, now we can see a subset of all the adapters that are available. And in our case, we want to um, integrate data from a Modbus device. So that's why we choose the Modbus um, adapter. And now the only information I need to provide is the address where the Modbus device is available. In our case, this is just the local host within a Docker container. Then the port where, where it is available, it's in our case 5002. And then I need the ID of the device, which is in our case zero. And then I need to add for Modbus all the data that I want to get from it. And in our case, it's, um, how was the name, sorry? It was the actual hot, temp uh, hot water temperature, uh, hot actual temperature of water. It was temperature. <laughs> sorry about that, uh, hot water. Okay, then I need to provide this address, which, are, which is what I already mentioned, and uh, simple select the register. So usually, for example, for the heat pump of Sven, um, it is then described the manual where you can find the data, so this should then be easily easy to fill up for you. As I already said, StreamPipes is fully event-based. That means every um, data point always needs a timestamp. This data source does not provide a timestamp yet. That's why we add one um, within StreamPipes. And then we just give it a name. In this case, it's heat pump uh, Modbus. And then we also can select here that data is directly stored within the StreamPipes internal data lake. Um, this allows it then to easily view them in the data explorer, uh, which I will show you later. And then you can already start the adapter. And here you can then, okay, I forgot one point. <laughs> Damn. Um, so Modbus allows you only to store integers, right? And uh, usually, for example, for temperatures, they are not integers, they are float values. And um, that's why you see here 459, because we have multiplied it by 10, and then you need to, this is a simple trick you already do in Modbus, uh, so you multiply values by, for example, 10 or 100 or whatever, and then redo the transformation within your um, data analysis platform, or in this case, Streampipes, and um, you can simply um, add the transformation rule when you created the adapter. That's the aspect I forgot about. I'm very sorry about this. Um, nevertheless, I can now show you um, how you can now analyze the data. Um, data is now flowing into stream pipes, and we can now create, um, so here you can now select a proper data um, source. That's the one I've just created. And then we can also select um, a type of visualization. I think in this case, a time series is the most easiest one. Um, and then you get directly created a nice chart here um, where you can select the time window you want to, you want to see. And yeah, so you can just have a, a view on the actual temperature that your device um, is sending. As I said, I'm a bit sorry that I missed this data manipulation part, but um, yeah. All right, so then let's get back to our um, slides. And 
And now Sven will talk, tell you a bit more about the Python part. Thank you, Tim. I will now continue with our, our StreamPipe's Python library. And I think our demo showed how easy it is to connect and to store data with StreamPipes. But we wanted to combine it with Python for the data analytics part and therefore created StreamPipe's Python. Our motivation was to address the amazing data analytics and data science community to benefit from the already existing Python libraries. Now let's take a look at some basic information about StreamPipes Python. It was freshly released with the new StreamPipes version and you can easily install it via PyPy. You can just type in pip install StreamPipes and then everything will be installed. We're also working on the Condor Forge package and this will follow soon. For more information, you can have a look at our documentation where you can find some tutorials and code explanations. Now let's take a look at the features of StreamPipes Python. It contains two basic features, which is the client and the function. The client um, interacts with the StreamPipes API and there you can get data from databases and get data like the meta information or the data stored in our time series databases. It allows to interact with the API as I already said and it connects to a running StreamPipes instant. The second feature are the StreamPipes function they are there to interact with the live data from the StreamPipes data streams and they are a lightweight processing element. They only exist at runtime and they allow to customly um, yeah, uh, add functionalities that you want. So you can um, manipulate the live data with the functions and there are some built-in features like an easy integration for online machine learning for the river library. Now let's have a closer look at the architecture of the client. So the client interacts with the StreamPipes API, which is a REST API, and uses different endpoints to communicate with the, this API. Um, and it also provides different endpoints for different resources. So there's one endpoint for the data lake measures and one for the data streams. Then you can get the data by either using the all method, which will provide you with all resources of this time. And this also supports the slicing, indexing and looping operators. On the other hand, you can get a single resource by providing the idea of this resource and then you can get just a single resource. After you got the data, you can also um, represent it um, yeah, in different ways. So there's a representation as a pandas data frame, as a dictionary or as a raw JSON. Now let's see an example how it looks in the code. Um, there you can configure your client. Um, you can add um, so the username and API key, but I will show this more detailed in our second demo. And then you can configure some things like the host address and the port. And after that, you can create a client with these configurations and then get the data as I showed before. Um, you can also see the tutorial section of our documentation if you want to try it out yourself and want to get more information. Now let's move on with the architecture of the function. They don't only interact with the StreamPipes API, but also with the messaging layer of StreamPipes. And the messaging layer uses different brokers to broadcast the live messages between different components of stream pipes. So therefore we have the function handler that interacts with that and it internally uses as the stream pipes client to interact with the API. And in, 
this case in particular gets the meta information about some data streams which is used to connect to them. After that, you can register different functions that you want. We also have a function zoo where you can use some predefined functions like a live printing function of the data or a function to integrate online machine learning models. And you can create your own function and yeah, add some functionality that you want. And the final part are the brokers. They communicate with the messaging layer and they make sure that every function gets the right data from the right data stream and yeah, make sure that everything works the right way. Now let's see this in live and I will show you how you can do this in a second demo. So this demo will show you how you can get your data from a Streampipes data lake into Python and it also shows how you can subscribe to live data from a Streampipes data stream. But first of all, we have to create a client. And therefore, we import all necessary modules and then yeah, can set the environment variables for the user and for the API key. I will quickly show you how you can get your API key in Streampipes. Therefore, we go back to Streampipes and in the top right, you can go to your profile, then go to API, enter a name for your RP key, and then simply create it. After that, you can copy your API key and insert it into your notebook. After that, you can create the configuration for the client. So here you load the environment variables and set the host address and the port. And then we can um, create the client. We will quickly test if everything works by using the describe method. And as you can see, everything works fine. You can see that we successfully connected to stream pipes and that we have two data lake meshes and two data streams available. We can also have a closer look at the data lake meshes. And here we use the API for the data lake measure and want to show all of the data in a pandas representation. So that's exactly the architecture as I showed before. And here you can see we have our um, data lake that we created oh, and created in this first demo, which is here the Modbus um, heat pump and we have another data lake where we already stored all data before and we want to get this data now. So now we can ex simply extract the data from the data lake and yeah, use um, the get method and we can simply insert the identifier that we can see here to import the data. I also do some yeah, pre-processing for the date time, which we will use for later data analytics. And as you can see, we now get a pandas data frame where we have different values of the heat pump, like some temperature values or the power consumption of the heat pump. And we can also customize this request and um, we can add yeah, different options like a limit, how many data points we want, and we can also select some columns. So here we select different columns that contains a temperature value, 
and it's also possible to um, configure a start and end date for this data. And here I get this data and show it uh, with the Plotly library. And now you can see that we get the different temperature as a plot. But before, before we have a closer look at this, I first want to give you some basic understanding of the data. So we have our heating pump right here. Right. Um, and the heating pump heats up the water. And this water is used to either um, heat up the hot water tank or the buffer tank, which is used for the heating circuit. And so here the water gets heated through some heating coils and then goes through the heating circuit where it goes through different radiators to heat up your room. So now let's go back. Here you can see the different temperatures. So in blue, there's the outside temperature. And on top, you can see the actual temperature and the target temperature for the hot water. And below that, that's the same for the heating circuit. And if we have a closer look here, can you turn? Oh, that <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, Get you back. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry, yeah, that's correct. So here we can see the, the target temperature of the hot water uh, variates between um, different yeah, times of the day. And here you can see how the hot water gets heated up by the heat pump and after that slowly uh, um, gets colder. And there are sometimes some huge drops in the temperature and that's probably when somebody had a shower and used a lot of hot water at once. And now we want to have a closer look at the um, efficiency of our heat pump. Therefore, you, we need to know how we can calculate it. So the efficiency is just the heat output put, which is generated by the heat pump to heat up these two tanks divided by the power consumption that the heat pump uses as electrical energy. And yeah, we can calculate this, this efficiency <laughs> in um, Python right now. Therefore, when we create, uh, first calculate the total um, produced energy in form of heat per every day and create a new column for the day and group by this day. After that, we can um, add the heating energy and the hot water energy together and plot the results. And here you can see the total power consumption for every day uh, um, for this time range. And we can exactly do the same for the consumed power where we just um, yeah, add the power consumption for the heating circuit together with the power consumption of the hot water. We will also plot this and uh, here you can see how it looks like with this bar chart. And with these two values, we can now um, calculate the efficiency of the heat pump. And we just use the formula uh, that I showed before. So we take the heat and divide it by the consumed power. And then we get our efficiency. And we also want to compare the efficiency with the outside temperature at the corresponding days. And therefore create a new column where we um, yeah, insert the mean temperature for this day. And that's just some code for the plotting. I won't go into detail here. And as you can see, we now get our efficiency in the, with the blue bars, which reaches from about three to six, which means that the heat pump produces three to six times of the energy that it consumed. And it, yeah, as you can see, they are very efficient and which makes them so environment friendly. And as you can see, there's a st also a strong correlation between the um, temperature and the efficiency. And we want to have a closer look at this 
in another um, data analysis. Therefore, we can calculate our efficiency by using pandas and can also plot these two values together in an, um, a scatter plot. And as you can see, there's a really high correlation between these two values with about 0 0.8, and there's a clear trend that it hotter it gets, the more efficient the heat pump works. Now, uh, our next step is to get the live data from stream pipes. And therefore, we want to look at the available data um, streams. And we uh, uh, yeah, just use the structure that I showed. So we use the data stream API, get all data streams, and convert it to a pandas data frame. And as you can see, there are the two um, different data streams, the one we created and the one we used for to get all data. We will now connect to the Modbus um, yeah, data stream and therefore copy this element ID. And then we want to create a function to get this data. Therefore, we need to implement the four following methods. The first one is to um, required stream IDs, where we will insert our copied stream ID. Then there's an on service started method, which w gets called when the function gets started. And here you can create, uh, we will create a dictionary to save all the data and print out that the function gets started. The most important function is the on event method. Um, and it's called whenever a new event arise, uh, arrives. And there we will um, save all the live data in our dictionary. And we will also create a live plot for this data. And the final method is the on service stopped. And there we will just print out that our function got stopped. Here you can see exactly what I told you in code. I won't go into detail here, but you can find this notebook in a GitHub repository if you want to take, uh, have a closer look at this. There's just one extra thing you, want, uh, you have to know. We can uh, yeah, set this column we want to plot for this live plot function, and then it will plot this um, data live. So let's move on. Um, we can now um, create our live plot. Therefore, we need um, yeah, another environment variable where we tell where the host is. And after that, we can initialize a registration where we can register our function, which is the live plot function I defined before. And there we want to um, plot the actual temperature of the hot water. And then we can create the function handler that handles all the data, and we can initialize it. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. Uh, I'm sorry. I think uh, we, yeah. Yeah, we mixed up the name. <laughs> Do we actually remember? Because then we. Okay, so I think so. The problem is here. We we have chosen a different name for for the actual um, column, I guess. That's yeah. why, why it's not working. Yeah, yeah. I think um, out of time we have to skip it. No, I'm really sorry about it. Um, but what you, what you now would see here is the live interaction. Um, so you would now see a live plot. Um, I'm sorry about that. I will quickly try if I get this work. If not, we will just stop it. Um, Ah, oh, I actually, yeah, I think it's a different mistake. Um, I'm sorry, I know it. Uh, right now, I, it's a stupid mistake, but I just forgot <laughs> to insert the actual <laughs> ID. So I'm sorry about this. So now sh everything should work. I hope so. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. That's the bad thing about live demos. I'm, yeah, really sorry. And yeah, you could, if it would work, then easily disconnect this function.
So that's all I wanted to show you for this demo. Um, and there's a lot more you could do. Um, so you could um, use the online machine learning functionality to get some more um, information about the data. You could easily create notification with stream pipes and you could also use this data to optimize your heat pump by changing configurations and then monitor the changes of the efficiency. All right, so I think this pretty well highlights, um, Suspense showed some um, really powerful tools of how you can analyze data in Python. And that's just the interface we, we want to uh, address, right? So we want to have stream pipes as a tool which allows you to easily, um, to easily get access to, to data from industrial context um, and then use the power of Python to create amazing results of it. So that's already the main part of our talk. Um, we now somehow need a bit of your help. So uh, we love your support. Um, if you're interested in contributing in stream pipes, we're always open to that. Otherwise, maybe just give it a try. Um, provide us some feedback. Could be either positive or negative. We're happy about both. Um, if you like it, it's always great if you spread the word. And if you have some interesting use cases um, you want to share with us or the wider community, it would also be great if you just uh, approach us and then we can maybe think about a blog post or, some blog post or something else. Um, if you want to, to talk about uh, stream pipes later than this talk, um, we're happy to, to welcome you at our InnoVac stand, which is just directly across the food area. And um, I will be there from time to time. And if not, my colleagues will surely approach us. And as Sven already mentioned, um, we have created a GitHub repository where you can just find the whole demo and all the things you need to reproduce it. Um, so if you're interested in give it a, uh, give it a shot, uh, then you can go here. Then my last words will be thank you a lot for your attention and your interest and enjoy the conference. Well, thank you very much, team. Thank you very much, Sven. I think it was a very nice uh, and interesting presentation. Um, if you want to ask any questions, please uh, go to Slido. Um, there the code is PyCon DE PyData23. I think the QR code is also outside. Um, there are some questions already, so I will ask you questions. Um, so the first one is, how can you extend stream pipes with connectors for additional custom protocols? Mm -hmm. That's rather easy. So um, similar to pipeline elements, we also offer an uh, SDK to easily uh, create your own adapter for, for stream pipes. And um, this is currently also only possible in Java, um, but there are, is, uh, I would say, an extensive, extensive documentation and also some code generation around so that you only need to implement the stuff that matters for your uh, connector and uh, not all the boilerplate that is required by stream pipes. And our question is, is there a query language for the data lakes in the Python SDK that supports time-based aggregation, something like Flux for InfluxDB? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so currently we store data internally in, uh, in, Flux, in a Influx database, um, and we make it extensible to the other side via the REST API. So currently, it's not possible to directly query the data via a query language, um, but via the REST API, which then allows you to handle the data within the Python environment and use pandas or polas or whatever you want, want to use. And our question is, what does the deployment model look like for stream pipes? Mm -hmm. um, so stream pipes is um, a microservice based tool. So uh, we have a couple of, of Docker images in place and then you're able to start stream pipes simply with Docker Compose. That's the most convenient and easiest deployment solution. And um, in case you want to actually work on Apache stream pipes, then the CLI is probably more the way you want to go. And if you want to use stream pipes in a more mature way, we also have a, a Helm chart in place so that you can easily deploy stream pipes within a Kubernetes uh, setup. Okay. Thank you. Um, there are two more questions. Uh, one is, can timestamps be defined as part of the parameter list? Get so. Um, probably. The question is about when I query the data from, from the API. Um, sure it can, 
uh, since we have an event-based schema and we always talk about time series, the timestamp is always per default um, um, trans transmitted and you will always get the data within a time, with a timestamp, so um, yeah. Another question that I think it's also interesting uh, because I was wondering myself this, it's if I wanted to try tr stream pipes out at home, do you know any accessible IoT devices to practice with? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so usually I think I personally are not aware of any public available IRT devices. Um, maybe some others are, but for certain protocols, for example, for UPC UA, there are some demo services online public, publicly available that you can just connect them to stream pipes. Um, also, or you use, for example, the simulator that I have used in this demo, which is also included in the repository um, we share here. Thanks, and one last is, what is your focus for further development, web app or Python SDK? Mm -hmm. um, definitely both. Um, so we will, in next time, work a lot on the Python integration to make that more mature and also more feature rich. Um, but the UI part is always a central component of Streampipes and will also be further developed. Um, so I think it's definitely both, yeah. Okay, great. So let's give them one more applause. Thank you so much.